Charlie Corbett lives life like a normal four-year-old, but he's lucky to be alive. Two years ago, he had a seizure. Which was terrifying um, because it wasn't an f- arms flailing seizure, it was a focal seizure, which just basically means he went limp. Charlie was struck down with a common virus, which most children overcome. But because of a rare disorder affecting his immune system, he was left unable to walk or speak. Charlie now receives a life-saving treatment. Oh, no, that one doesn't hurt. Made from donated plasma. He's the bravest boy in the whole world. That helps his body fight illness. He'll need this infusion of immunoglobulin every week for the rest of his life. He genetically can't make B cells, so if he doesn't have this supplement, he is very prone to illness and now that he's on regular treatment, he's just blossomed. I started riding motorcycles when I was 18 and my mother insisted that I should donate blood in case I needed it. But in the 186 donations of plasma that I've made since then, I've often wondered, where does that product go and who does it help? Hi Hazel, how are you going? Oh, good thanks Mark, have you got your donor card? Across Australia, 33,000 donations are needed each week and demand for plasma is at an all-time high and the need is growing. It can take up to 15 donations to make a single dose. Plasma actually makes up more than half of our donations now, which is opposed to our traditional whole blood donations. And plasma is such a powerful part of our blood that can be used in over 18 life-giving ways, such as protecting children from chickenpox, or treating people who have had complications with burns, or, or even treating people that have had severe kidney diseases. Donated blood and plasma is shipped to four processing centres around Australia, some going direct to hospitals for cancer, heart surgery and burns victims with the rest shipped to CSL in Melbourne to be made into treatments like Charlie's. Lifeblood estimates 13 million Australians may be eligible to donate, but don't. Restrictions on who can donate are now being reviewed and a ban on donations from people who lived in Britain during the mad cow outbreak has been reviewed by the TGA. Part of you that feels quite fearful that the well-being of your child is dependent on the generosity of others, but thankfully, the generosity of others seems seats to keep coming, which we're incredibly grateful for. This will be something that Charlie does, yeah, for the rest of his life, and I'm I'm hopeful that the system stays as strong as it is, and I'm hopeful that people keep donating and that people realise that they the profound impact they have on people people from doing it. 140,000 new donors are needed to keep meeting the demand and to keep Charlie bouncing through life. Mark Bennett, ABC News, Albany.